Today we're going to take a look at a new basic multimeter I got from Tessman, the Tessman TM510. This is an auto range basic multimeter for any toolbox. Auto ranging non-contact voltage detector has a flashlight, data hold, LCD backlight, 4000 counts is what they say. So it opens up just like this, comes in a little package, instruction manual. We'll forget that. Let's take a look at the goods. So, very lightweight. Has a little cover over it. Battery compartment is held together with a screw. And it comes with a pair of Duracell batteries. Triple A. Not for retail sale, Duracell. Load up the batteries and the meter comes to life. This is a very lightweight meter. Auto range. Just two connectors on the front. Comes with some basic test leads. We're going to do some just some quick tests with this unit and uh, see what it does and what it doesn't do. Okay, so first things first. It's got a light. If I press that button, that turns on the backlight. Press it again, it turns it off. If I press and hold, it will probably turn on the flashlight, which it does. So it has a little built-in LED flashlight. So if you're using it in the dark, you can see what you're doing. Press and hold, turns that off. So that's a double function of the button. The unit is very basic. It's auto ranging, so it should detect AC or DC. If I plug it into AC, it tells me that it's 122 volts AC. Now, is that is that accurate or not? Let's check it out with the one that will be a fluke if it's accurate. We'll put the fluke meter in AC voltage range and we'll measure the voltage with the fluke. And see that I actually have 122.6 volts. So both of them are measuring the same. If I put both meters on here, both are measuring exactly the same, 122.7 volts coming off my Variac. If I turn my Variac down to 120, there we go. So we know that the AC voltage measurement is correct. Let's check the DC voltage measurement. I'll turn on my DC power supply and I'll set the voltage to 20 volts. Okay, so I've set it to 20.0 volts. If I put the fluke meter in DC range, we'll see that we have 20.05 volts. The Tessman, 20.12. Pretty close. If I set the power supply down to 12 volts, twelve point zero. This one's measuring 12.04. I think probably close enough for one hundredths of a volt is pretty accurate. What else can we measure with this? Let's measure some resistors. First I have a 2.2K resistor. We'll measure it on the fluke. The fluke says 2.208K. Measure it on the Tessman. 2.2K. 2.22. So again, 
it's fairly accurate. Another resistor here. This one is measuring, uh, this resistor is 230k ohms, measuring 233k on the Fluke, 234k, 233k, there you go. So accuracy wise, it's not bad for what it is. I believe it just does volts, AC, DC, and ohms, and it has a, a continuity tester. So when you've got continuity, it will beep. I don't believe it has diode test capabilities. I don't see a diode test, and it does have non-contact voltage detection. So let me just, we'll look at the specs on this, but if I push, uh, oh, it has a hold feature, so you can hold whatever it's reading. So, if you make a measurement and you press the hold button, it'll hold the display. Non-contact, if you push and hold, it puts it into non-contact uh, voltage detection. So, if I move this anywhere near where there's any power, it should start to, to alert me. So, let's move it over near the power bar. So, there you go. You don't need to have test leads plugged in for this, at least you shouldn't. So I'll unplug the test leads and it still tells me that there's a high voltage there. It has two warnings, low, and as they get closer. You might wonder, who would benefit from a meter like this? Well, this is a basic meter that pretty much anybody could use. If you need to just measure some basic ohms and volts this will do the job if you're looking for open circuits this will do the job a handyman for example would have one of these in his toolkit if he's checking for voltage at plugs or checking for low voltage at say things such as doorbells for example you've got a doorbell that's not working you can check the for the 12 or 18 volts AC and you don't have to worry about making any changes, just turn it on and it's automatically going to tell you whether you've got AC or DC. It has a maximum input of 600 volts and just push and hold the power button to turn it on. I think that that's probably the type of person that would would have something like this. Let's see if it'll measure skin resistance. Yes, it does. That's just measuring skin resistance. So the uh, readings are... We'll take a look at the... the uh, the manual here to see what the uh, the specs are on this unit here. So looking at the manual, the non-contact voltage sensing is obviously in the front here. Okay, you got your indicator light, your LCD display, hold button, power button, backlight, flashlight button, we already figured this out, input terminal, common terminal, and test leads. It says uh, data hold, press this button while performing a test to hold and freeze the, dis the display for easy reading. We already figured that out non-contact press and hold it a long press we already figured that part out too here's our specifications over range shows ol and has a low battery indicator tells you your polarity dc negative or dc positive the accuracy is rated at 0 0.001 volt in the 4 volt range uh, one one hundredth of a volt in the 40 volt range and the 400 volt range is within one tenth of a volt and in the 600 volt range it's one volt that's for DC voltage AC voltage it's the same and your measurable voltage is 0.8 to 600 volts so it will not measure anything less than 0.8 volts in your resistance range again 0.001 k ohms all the way through to point zero one mega ohms accuracy uh, the buzzer comes on when you if you have a short anything less than 50 ohms will trigger it into continuity mode and if it's over 50 ohms then it will read the actual ohms it'll read the ohms anyway but it'll set the buzzer off if it's less than 50 ohms and has a frequency for response between 40 hertz and one kilohertz true rms that's the specs on it so a very basic meter. We're going to pull the back off it and just take a look at the uh, the actual construction of the unit and show you guys what's inside it. And then we'll end it because this is, again, a very simple, little simple basic meter for your basic testing needs. So first we'll remove the batteries and then we'll remove the four screws that hold the unit together. 
again, a, a little meter like this would be perfect for just having in your toolbox just for your basic measurement needs. You're not going to be repairing electronics with something like this. If you're in the business of repairing electronics, I would expect you would have a fluke or something a little more elaborate. But for your basic household needs, a little meter like this will certainly do the job. And then if, you, if it gets lost or broken, it's no great loss because it's not a very expensive meter. There's the back off the unit itself. You can see it's just basically a one chip solution that's on there. You've got the buzzer. I think that's the light. The buzzer's here. It's got the LED for the flashlight on the back here. It's got the LED for the display mounted here. And it's just a one chip solution. You don't even know what chip it is because it's just under a blob of epoxy. But like all these basic meters, there's not much to them. Got some resistors on the input here couple transistors and one IC so not much to it not much to show you just wanted to pop it apart show you give you guys a look inside the unit itself I could pull the board out and show you the, the buttons on the front but they're just going to be your standard uh, rubber buttons with the carbon pad on the back like remote controls have so I don't think there's any need to go to that extreme power is contacts through the battery here onto these two little springs so very, very basic. Here's your non-contact voltage detection up here, that metal strip. That's what's isolated and that's what detects the voltage. So that's about all there is to it. Packs up quite nicely into its own little carry bag. A couple little covers. I guess they go on here. They cover up the leads. Anyway, nice little carry case. Be nice in anyone's toolbox for when you need to make a quick measurement when you're out in the field. Thanks for watching. The link is in the description. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.